This is part one of Things I Wish I Had Known When I First Set Up My Mac Laptop Lab by Tina Holland. Hi there. My name is Tina Holland and I teach science at Sparks Middle School. In this podcast, I hope to share some of the ideas that I've learned these past few months to hopefully make your laptop lab journey easier for you. Thanks to a very generous grant from the EL Cord Foundation, along with years of fundraising, I was able to purchase 29 MacBooks at the end of the school year last year, and I officially had them up and running by this past se September. To say it has been an interesting and exciting journey so far is an understatement. The laptops have been an incredible tool in my classroom, but as you can imagine, it has also been really overwhelming at times. So. To help you not feel as overwhelmed as I did, I have created this podcast about some things I wish I had known when I first set up my Mac Laptop Lab. It is my hope to answer some questions you might have now that you have received your laptops as well as share some things I have learned these past few months with my lab. In part one of this podcast, I will discuss what you need to do first. I'll also talk about laptop management and charger management. In part two of the podcast, I will talk about power management and I will suggest some software and accessories that I have found to be vital to a successful laptop lab. Okay, so you have your laptops and you are wondering what to do first. The first thing to do is to cut the UPC label from the packing box, which I will tell you the reason for later. And then, of course, you're going to unpack the laptop, including the charger, power extension cord, and the software restore disk. In order to keep the UPC label with the correct laptop, you're going to open the lid to the laptop and, of course, place the UPC label you cut out inside. Once all the laptops are unpacked with your UPC labels inside, it is now time to number, number, number. Laptop Management I found using a black Sharpie proved to be the quickest and easiest way to number my laptops. As you can see in the picture, I wrote my school's initials, my name, and the computer number. Also, I turned the laptop around facing away from me, and I wrote a large number on the other side as well. I did this so when the laptop is being used, I can easily identify the student with the computer number. This numbering is vital to both computer maintenance and record keeping, as well as classroom management with remote desktop software. By the way, I also placed the number on the inside upper right-hand corner of the computer lid so the student can also see their computer number. In order to have the laptops return to the cart in an easy and smooth transition, I also numbered the side of the laptops and the laptop cart slots. Again, not only does it save valuable time at the end of the class periods or day, but it also makes it easy to do a quick inventory of all the laptops and make sure that they are properly returned. Remember that UPC label I told you to save? You will want to make sure that you also write the laptop number on this label as well. Then tape this label on a piece of paper and write the matching computer number on the upper right corner. Since I figured I'll have my laptops for a long time and need to keep good records of them, I made a copy of this paper and filed the original so as not to ruin the master label. I used the copy to document any problems with the laptop, any software installs or upgrades, or important maintenance information. As you can see in the photograph, I documented the problem I had with laptop number 14 as well as the solution that AppleCare gave me in order to fix the problem. This documentation also makes for a good reference if the same problem should appear in another laptop. I then keep all of this information and documentation pertaining to my laptop lab in a binder for easy and quick access. Charger Management Along with laptops, I also numbered every side of the charger, especially the removable block as well as the tiny part that magnetizes to the laptop. To be quite honest, chargers have proven to be quite a challenge for me as they are big, bulky, cumbersome, and incredibly inconvenient. Chargers seem to require a great skill and patience, and I'm even beginning to think even a knowledge of quantum physics or something in order to properly wrap the cores so they would stay in place and not fall out of the laptop cart. Couple the skill requirement with seventh grade and you were in for some charger pandemonium. I know this sounds silly, but trust me, I spent weeks dealing with charger insanity until I finally got the brilliant idea to simply wrap the charger cords with a doubled rubber band. 
This simple solution has saved a significant amount of time when putting away the laptops as well as keeping the laptop cart neat and orderly. Of course, we have a new charger rule and that is do not remove the rubber band. I know what you're thinking. What if the student's laptop battery is dead and needs to be plugged into an outlet? Which brings me to the next chapter in charger management. If a student needs to charge their laptop, they must remove the block and use the charger extension cord. In order to prevent the blocks from being lost or accidentally walking out the door, I keep a bucket on the cart where the blocks are kept. The extensions are hanging on an over the door hanger next to the laptop cart. Using the extensions and keeping the cords wrapped up has many advantages. Remember I told you that the chargers are big, bulky, and cumbersome? At first, we used to plug the chargers directly into the power strips I have attached to my science tables. Invariably, despite allowing ample room in between rows, these chargers would be constantly bumped and accidentally and easily knocked down from the power strips to the floor. This would happen several times a day. Imagine this each time and several times a day, and it would only be a matter of time before the chargers would break. Considering the chargers are $80, I figured I better change something and I better change it quick. So now, not only do the cords stay wrapped in a rubber band, but students are only allowed to plug the extension cords into the power strips and the chargers must remain safely on top of the desk. Which now brings me to my next topic and that is power management, which you can hear about in part two of this podcast.